Hey, what's up guys? This is the Chromecast with Google TV. It just came out. It sells for $50 in the US. This is essentially designed to replace the older Chromecast Ultra. They both support 4K, but obviously this one has a remote where the Chromecast Ultra does not. And also the Chromecast Ultra does not actually have a user interface type of thing where you go through your menus. This thing's more designed to work with your phone, so you cast stuff with your phone. So you go to Netflix or YouTube or whatever, and then you cast it to the Chromecast, which shows up on your TV. Where this one is kind of menu driven, it has apps and stuff, and you could select whatever you want. And you know, a whole bunch like YouTube, YouTube TV has Netflix, Prime Video, Spotify, Disney Plus, Hulu, whole bunch of stuff. And obviously supports 4K, has Google Assistant built in, and obviously comes with the remote, as I mentioned. So let's open this up. But as a frame of reference, it's kind of very similar to a Fire TV. So if you guys want to get a ballpark, it's kind of like this where it has its own menu system and a remote. This looks like the Chromecast. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. Nothing else in here. Okay. Open this up. Nice and flat. Very similar to the size of the Chromecast Ultra. Has a matte finish. So, and HDMI obviously and stuff. Let's see what else this comes with. The remote. The fact that this is $50 is, is pretty good. But I think they were trying really hard to compete with the Fire TV. So the remote looks pretty cool. I like the circular design and stuff, the curved edges. I do wish it had a fast forward and rewind button. So this is the Fire TV remote that came with my Fire TV uh, 4K stick. And obviously the Google, the Chromecast has a smaller remote, but I actually really use the fast forward and the rewind quite often. I I would care less about YouTube and Netflix buttons because I could just go to those through the app. So yeah, one thing I do want to say is I actually, it'd be nice if these were dedicated fast forward and rewind buttons. It probably works with this and stuff, but yeah, I don't know. I kind of like those dedicated buttons, but that's the remote. It's probably, yeah, two AAA batteries and stuff. Let's see if they were nice enough to give that. So obviously, uh, manuals and stuff. USB power for anyone interested. Five volts, one and a half amps, seven and a half watts. USB-C, I actually really like that it's USB-C. I really like that they're pushing for that. And yay, it came with batteries. Google size AAA. So this is these are Google batteries. Never seen that before. It says Google size AAA right here. Anyways, interesting. Okay, so let's do some size comparisons between this and the Fire TV stick. So obviously this is much wider. And the Fire TV stick, for you guys that don't know, you can actually pull this out and stuff. This is kind of like design that, you know, if this doesn't fit in a tight space, but obviously uh, Google TV doesn't need that because this, so be sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm going to do another video where I'm actually going to compare uh, Google TV with Fire TV. I do have to say these are pretty cool batteries. I like the fact that it's a clear plus. So after playing with it for a bit, it's pretty similar to the Fire TV, at least the interface and stuff where it shows you the movies. And it's actually pretty cool because, you know, it's recommending this stuff and it's like, okay, Indiana Jones, right? And then I click on this and it says, oh, it's from Netflix. And then if I go to, let's say Total Recall, okay, this one's also Netflix. Let's go to Conan. Okay, so this one's on Prime Video. So I can actually just click on this and it'll straight take me there and I'll actually play the video. So it's pretty cool that it does that. So obviously it starts playing the video and stuff. So I'm gonna click on home. Um, other than that, it has some apps. Uh, these are the apps that I choose to install. Obviously you can uninstall them. You can install more. So it, again, recommends other things for you from different places. 
Some of them have prices. Those are the ones that obviously you need to buy. One thing I did notice while I was playing with this, so if I go to movies, it recommends Man of Steel. And if I click on this, obviously it shows rent $3.99 by $14.99. The thing that would be nice is I own this movie on Amazon Prime. And because I'm already logged in, it would be nice if it went to Amazon Prime and it said, oh, you already own this instead of, you know, trying to ask me to buy it again from Google. So that would be nice. So that's one thing that I did notice. So it looks like it only detects Prime videos to see if they're free or not. Anything else, it just defaults to Google and says like, hey, do you want to get this movie or not? Same thing for shows, obviously. Uh, the apps. You can install different ones. You can search for apps with the Google Assistant. So, you know, VLC is installed, but you know, if I wanted to install VLC or something, you know, I could either hold the Google Assistant and say, VLC for Android. VLC for Android. Opening, VLC. Okay, so I actually opened it because I had it installed, but if I didn't have it installed, it would actually uh, go to it for me to install it. So what VLC lets me do is I can go to my local network and I can select from my network attached storages and then, you know, pick and play a video. Obviously I have to log in. So if I go to like this station, it's going to ask me to log in. But once I do log in, it'll let me do that. So that's pretty cool. And you can obviously install other apps. So I installed YouTube music and stuff. So you can use that and it's, it's pretty responsive. Okay, so I could be in YouTube Music and then I could go home and then I could be in YouTube, like, automatically. It would be nice if you could scroll to the Netflix screen a little bit faster, but it's... It doesn't seem laggy. Right, if we go back to Home with the Home button, go to Prime Video, Obviously, I signed in with this. Okay, see, a, a tad bit laggy. Not terrible, but it's a little bit laggy. I mean, it, it's, it's obvious. Let me see if I can see my stuff that I bought. All seven seasons, I didn't purchase season eight for Game of Thrones, but yeah, it looks like you could see movies I bought and stuff. Okay. Okay, so other than that, if you want to go to settings, you just go to the account and you could click on settings and then you can select this stuff, you know, sign in, privacy. You know, if you want this stuff on or off, purchases, special app access. So all your settings are here. So mine is a 1080p TV, but obviously this supports 4K. So you can enable 4K. Uh, it should do it automatically if you have a 4K TV. apps you can uninstall from here or install and stuff like that so let's say i wanted to uninstall google duo I'll just go here and then click ok uninstall and then good to go hbo max i don't need that oh done so and sling tv i don't need that as well so System, you know, your basic stuff, updates, language, ambient mode. This is the one where you could choose if you want Google Photos or you want the art gallery, like whatever you want to show up while it's in ambient mode. Energy saver, turn off display after 30 minutes or something. So all these things you can... So let others control your cast media always while casting. So whole bunch of stuff and you know you get your restart and you can add another remote update available oh, okay cool 
I could just go to the video, press play, and then I could click on that screen right there, and then click on Chromecast, and then it'll actually cast it there. Hey, what's up, guys? So Tesla just announced their brand new battery. So that's the pretty cool thing about getting an app. You can actually type in and get the QWERTY keyboard and stuff, but the app works fine. You can even search by voice. One Punch Man. Okay. So within the Google Home app, I could click on Chromecast and I could say cast my screen and cast my screen. And it will literally just show me whatever is on my screen, which is pretty cool. So a few cool things that it definitely does. Is it worth 50 bucks? Probably, I would say. But definitely check out my other video where I'm going to compare this to the Fire TV stick, the 4K one. And I'll give you guys my opinion on that. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment sections below. Thank you guys for watching and thank you to all my current subscribers.